Got a little prop this morning. Thank you, Grace and Elika. Beautiful, beautiful song. And thank you, Maggie, for reading the scripture. And today, our sermon title is Accept God. It's on the front of your bulletin. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Isn't this beautiful? I purchased this backpack in the markets of Ghana. The symbol is the same symbol on the front of your bulletin. In the Twi language of Ghana, the symbol represents, and I pray I say this properly, Elikam, Jinyame, which literally translates as unless God. Elikam blessed me this week as I asked him for a little more background on that symbol. He said it literally translates as unless God. Another acceptable translation is except God. Some people say, but God. And the Hebrew text that is the first verse of today's scripture expresses the sentiment of ji yami in this way. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side. Jinyame, this symbol and the first verse of our scripture is the sentiment, the belief, and I quote our own Elikam Fiasse, the faith that the hand of God is always at play in our day-to-day -day activities to direct, lead, comfort, reassure us of God's love. In short, Elikam says, it is just by the good grace of God. Thank you, Elikam, for confirming for me that the symbol and its meaning and our scripture today are the same expression of faith that the hand of God is involved in our lives and demonstrates the grace of God is at work in our lives. Here again, verse 1. The psalmist says, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, and instead of finishing the statement, he pauses and invites the people of Israel to join him. So he says, let Israel now say. And the people join in with the psalm in verse 2, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, and, and this excites me so much. Why? Because this is so similar to the invitation from the psalmist last week. Psalm 9, 98, sing to the Lord a new song, for the Lord has done marvelous things. And it's similar to the invitation that I also referenced in Psalm 96 last week. Ascribe to the Lord. All the families of nations ascribe to the Lord glory and strength, ascribe to the Lord the glory due God's name. I encouraged you last week to consider a new spiritual practice, to take some time to ascribe to the Lord all the marvelous things God has done. And that doing so allows us to get to know God and the ways of God and instruct us even in our own ways as followers of Christ. That was the point. And if you did that, or if you even think about it right now, I'm sure you can think of wonderful blessings in your life 
that you can ascribe to God, the wonderful parents, the good upbringing, the blessings of a good education, a good career, the ability to earn a living, having your own health, having healthy children. Maybe your blessings are different. Maybe your marvelous thing is that once again, God woke you up this morning and started you on your way. The Psalms, the Psalms and the assignment from last week were invitations to reflect on all the marvelous things God has done. I learned early in my life to ascribe to God all the amazing things that were happening in my life. For surely James 1 and 17 says, every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord. So I learned that in my young years and I never forgot it. So every time something good happened to me, I ascribed it to the Lord and I said, thank you, Jesus. Today's psalmist gives us a different formula, if you will, for the spiritual practice of ascribing things to God. And instead of just listing the marvelous things, this psalmist invites us to consider some if-then statements. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, then blank would have happened. What a powerful invitation. The people of God, and in modern times, that includes us, are invited to consider what might have been if the Lord had not been on our side. Now I warn you that this approach to spiritual practice suggested by the psalmist may not be as fun as listing all the marvelous things that God has done. It might even be a bit uncomfortable for some of us to go down this path of thinking what could have been, but apparently it serves a purpose for the people of God for it's in the sacred text to ponder the possibilities of what could have been had it not been for God. So let's follow the text and allow the spirit to do the rest. The, the psalmist says, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, and Israel joins in, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, imagine a chorus of people, God's people, church people, High Park Union church people, saying together with many voices from different spaces and places and intersections, but all on one accord, imagine the power of a community together acknowledging times when God was on their side. It's a powerful possibility. The psalmist says it, then the people join in and they repeat it. Then the situation on which they are pondering is finally mentioned in verse two, to be when our enemies attacked us. God's people per the Old Testament, God's chosen people as the psalmist said this morning were attacked by their enemies. Let me help somebody's theology today. Being God's people or being children of the Most High God did not prevent enemies, nor did it prevent attacks. Attacks happened then, attacks happen now. Bad things happened then, bad things happen now. Evil was real then and evil is real now. Bondage was real then, bondage is real now. The reality of attacks stop some people from believing in God, but I encourage you to check your theology. The reality of God does not mean attacks don't happen, at least not in our faith tradition. So instead of giving up on God when attacks happen, try saying if it had not been for the Lord on our side, when our enemies attack, then run the list of what could have been or maybe even what should have been as Israel does in verses three through five, they say, then they would have swallowed us up alive when their anger was kindled against us. Then the flood would have swept us away. The torrent would have gone over us. Then over us have gone the raging waters. 
every once in a while, we need to look back over our lives and remember those situations that could have consumed us, could have taken us out even as a community, but they didn't. The worst never happened. Every once in a while, we need to participate in this spiritual practice of reflecting and realizing that even if we did have difficulties and the enemy, metaphorical or real, did attack, that if it had not been the Lord on our side, we wouldn't have made it this far. We would not have survived and we surely would not have thrived. Every once in a while, we need to participate in this spiritual practice of reflecting like Israel just reflected on the, those times when we could have been consumed. I remember at my, my former church still, I consider home, Greater Bethesda, talking to a, an older gentleman who had served in the Vietnam War, and he shared with me times when he simply did not think he would survive. And he said, it's only by the grace of God, if I remember correctly, he said, if it had not been for the Lord, I would not have survived. Verse six, they take it a little further. They say, blessed be the God who has not given us as prey to their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we have escaped. What situations have you escaped? If not you, what situations have you witnessed others escaping, even another people? People or the descendants of people who have escaped Horrible humanitarian tragedies often look back like God's people in the Old Testament, realizing that life has been difficult from bondage to exile, numerous enemies, battles, people who were lost along the way. And they realize that all in all, as a community, they have not been consumed. Every once in a while, we too need to realize, as the writer of Ecclesiastes says, it is because of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because the Lord's compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. That's where the great hymn comes from. God has indeed been faithful, and sometimes we won't see it when we're naming all the marvelous things that God has done. Sometimes we need to follow the formula of this Psalm 124 and write some if-then statements. If it had not been God on our side, then we would have been shut down completely for the past two years. But we weren't, and we've even had new members join us in the midst of a pandemic. Thanks be to God. If it had not been God on our side, then we would not have survived the loss of that loved one. If it had not been God on our side, then those of us who did get COVID might not have survived it, but we did. If it had not been God on our side, then when the enemy attacked our health or our finances or our homes or our marriages or our children or our country, we or they could have been destroyed, but that's not what happened. The worst did not happen. Why? Jinyame, except God. God stepped in, Yinyame. The hand of God acted on our behalf, except God. God acted decisively, faithfully, and favorably, except God. God made a way so many times out of nowhere. How do you know for sure? I hear your questions. When it was God that acted on your behalf, when what is should not be except God. When you can tell, as happened for me this week, that the circumstances have been orchestrated by someone with a bigger view of the big picture than you. When you look back over your life, I mean 20, 30 or more years back, and you see the intelligent orchestrated moves that you didn't intelligently orchestrate. 
So realize that God has been mindful of you, mindful of your life, mindful of your people, ordering your steps. Then you can say with confidence, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when our enemies attacked us, then they would have swallowed us up alive, then the flood would have swept us away, the torrent would have gone over us, then over us would have gone the raging waters. And I hear that, that same question that I kept hearing last week, but why? What purpose does this reflection serve? Why give God praise for what didn't happen? This morning I was awakened and, and last night I had wrapped up the sermon and thought I was done. And this morning I was awakened at about, awakened at about 3.30 a.m. by the sound of a loud knock. The knock was a brown-skinned man in my dreams, knocking on a door. The knock seemed so real that it woke me up. And when I woke up, my mind quickly brought me to the Haitian refugees. And the spirit began to speak to me saying, on this Sunday when you'll be visited, by the way, by the Hyde Park Refugee Project, and on this Sunday when there's trouble once again at the U.S. border, remind the people if it had not been the Lord on their side that we all have times when we could have been swept away by raging the raging waters of life. And just as the sacred text calls the children of Israel to reflect on times when they too were strangers, the same sacred text causes us to reflect on the same. God explicitly says it in Exodus 22 and 21. He says, and if you know the story of Exodus, put it in that context, don't mistreat or oppress an immigrant because you were once immigrants in the land of Egypt. In other words, if it had not been for the Lord, and our psalmist this morning calls us for the same, to the same reflection. The text is so powerful for today's Christians watching humanitarian failures for not only does it remind us and move us to reflect on those times when we were once strangers or times when God rescued us. It also says through the prophet Micah 6, 8, and what does the Lord require of you? but to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with God. And for Christians whose savior was himself a refugee, escaped from Bethlehem of Judea to Egypt to escape the terror of King Herod, when asked, this Jesus, when asked, how do I inherit eternal life? tells the story of a man battered on the side of the road and was not helped by the priest or the Levite who passed him by, but a Samaritan comes and takes care of the man, basically saving his life. And Jesus says that that is the way to inherit eternal life. And he tells the man, go and do likewise. When we come to, to know of modern day refugees, we recall that our savior was a refugee, that his ancestors in the scriptures were refugees whose faith practices led them to reflect and remember and to ascribe to God that if it had not been the Lord on their side, there is, there is the answer to why. As Christians, we are called to go and do likewise, we're called to remember and to reflect on the goodness of God in our lives. And then we're called to have compassionate hearts and go and do likewise. The Psalms, these Psalms from the past two Sundays, they cause us to reflect and ascribe to God all the marvelous things God has done. And they don't just call us to praise God so there's a noisy church. These Psalms cause us to look back, and this time with if-then statements, 
to imagine what could have been. Not so that we can just shudder and say, ooh, I'm grateful that didn't happen. But the sacred text and the spirit of the living God causes us to reflect and causes us to ascribe to God all that God has done and causes us to ascribe what could have been except God so that we would have the mind of God to do justice love mercy and walk humbly so that we would not sit and watch Haitians or any other people be mistreated by our government like they were animals and not human beings. So I'm asking each of us to consider some action on behalf of the Haitian refugees. I'm asking Mission and Outreach to consider leading us in some action on behalf of the Haitian refugees. I'm asking the High Park Refugee Project to let us know what they know and what they have seen and what they are planning and to engage us in some action on behalf of the Haitian refugees. Why? Because if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, then we would have been swallowed alive, but, but we weren't. The flood would have swept us away, but it didn't. The torrent and the raging waters would have gone over us, but it didn't. Yinyame, but God, except God, continue to ascribe to God your very survival. Your very presence is testimony that you are a survivor of something. Ascribe to God that except for God, the deliverance of God, for those, for things could be worse and we could be consumed. The next time you're under attack, Reflect on the grace of God on your life. Reflect on the grace of God on your family, the grace of God on your people, your heritage. Reflect on the grace of God on any intersection of your identity that has been under attack, under bondage, oppression, illness, depression, and say with conviction, if it had not been God who was on our side, and then open your eyes and see your neighbor who is under attack, the immigrant, the stranger, the people who need help, like the man on the side of the road and have compassion and do something with a heart of understanding, compassion, conviction, Go and do likewise, remembering that the psalmist ends the reflection with verse 8 saying, Our help and whatever God calls us to do is in the name of the Lord who made heaven. I love when the text gives God's credentials. Made heaven and earth the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.